Today, I've got a cool one I want to share with you. It's about how you can get your emails from your Gmail inbox into ClickUp with one click. Don't have to type anything. Don't have to do anything. This is a great time saver that I use to quickly triage my inbox so that I don't get stuck going down the rabbit hole. I can click one click on emails and get them into the inbox. So then when I go and click up to do my daily review, process everything, I can do it all there, not have to worry about it. And I have links back to the email if I need it. So if this sounds like something you could use, stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. Hey, I'm Adam with the Productivity Academy, and I want to show you the two kind of things you need to know um, when doing this. This is using Zapier, so we're going to be able to uh, put this in from uh, Gmail account into ClickUp, but you do need to have the ability to do three operations in one zap, which I believe uses a paid plan. Um, but I've been using Zapier for years and it changes from time to time as they update it. So make sure you understand what it can or can't do with your free or paid account. Um, but with that out of the way, I want to show you the two ways to do this because for some of us, if you have multiple Gmail accounts, um, for example, I have a personal account, which you can see the setup here. And then I have my productivity account, which uses uh, Gmail as well. Um, but I'll show you what the differences are and kind of how this works. Now, this is the personal setup. Now, how this works in one click is when you go into your email inbox, you can, for example, star an email, and then that will show up into ClickUp. For example, I'm going to go ahead, you can see this one isn't starred, I'm gonna star that. And you could do that from your inbox, or you could be clicking in and you could say, oh, yep, I just needed to check, yeah, this is really important. You can star it right here go back and go through it and I do this to quickly triage my inbox and that's how you can do it in one click I don't have to forward it anywhere I don't have to type anything in I can just click now the way this works with personal accounts is because of some permissions issues they cannot send it directly from Gmail into ClickUp it's just not allowed Google doesn't allow that to happen uh, so what you have to do as an in-between step is to create a Google Sheet which you can do in Google Drive um, and then you just map the fields in there. I will show you that uh, real quickly. So I apologize for the small screen over here. I can't really do anything about that. Um, but let's go in here and edit and this will make it a little bit easier to see. So basically all I did was started this off with Gmail. That is the trigger if you're setting up this app and you say, okay, I have a new start email. That's the action and you set up your account. Okay, that's it. That's the first part. Now don't need to test this. We want to move on to the second one. And what that is, is a Google sheet. And what you want to have happen is create a spreadsheet row. Okay. And now what I've done here, you can choose what you want to have in here, but anything you want to get into ClickUp needs to go to the sheet. So for example, you need to know the spreadsheet. And so you're going to want to create it first and then connect it. For me, I want to have the name or the from name, who it's from. Um, I want to have the email address, who's it from, and then again, uh, two, then I just have the, the kind of meat of all of this is the content and then the message URL. This is important. The email URL is the message URL and that allows me in ClickUp, which I'll show you in a minute, you can then have all of this and also you can click and it has URL in case you need to go back to that email. Maybe it requires a reply. Maybe you need to go back and see it in the original format, whatever it is. You don't have to open up a new browser, type in Gmail, go in there and find it. You can get directly to it. And then the subject line I like to have uh, just so you can see exactly what it is. And I will show you how this is all set up. So now uh, I don't need to test this. We've got some information in here and let's go in and check out the task. So what it's going to do as the third step is create a task. And now we're going to use this information from Google Sheets. So let's look at the configuration. I have this in my workspace. It's in my Adam personal space in my folder of getting things done. I've showed um, this setup in another video, which I will uh, link to right now and have that on how I use ClickUp for my personal tasks and kind of productivity. I have it in my inbox. And basically all of this is just standard ClickUp. You know, if you're using ClickUp, you understand you need to choose, hey, this is where it's going. Here's the list where it goes, et cetera. And then the task name. So this is what's going to show up as the task name before you even click into it. And I just have it set to a static email to review. So I know right away it's an email, you know, that defines what kind of a task it is when I look at it. And then I have the subject line because usually that's the most informative part of it. Maybe it's a client asking something, uh, it's a team member saying something, asking something. The subject line generally gives you a good idea. And then who it's from. Okay. So I can see quickly in this case, it was a, uh, actually a text message one, which is kind of weird. 
but usually it'll help me say, okay, I know what the email's about, I can see who it's from, great. And then in the task description, which is kind of the meat of the ClickUp task, right? We have the uh, descript, or sorry, we have the task name or title, and then in the description, I have the link right away because if I need to get back into the email, I want to quickly be able to go and do that, um, and that's visible right away. It's above the fold, if you will, when you're viewing tasks. And then I have the content in there, so um, right away I can see the entire email. Let's see down here. Um, I just assign it to myself. And then the rest of this is anything you want to do. Um, for me, I assign it to today just to have it set so it shows up. Um, and I review it and make sure I look at it. If I'm starring an email, it means it's something I want to look at. But for you, it may be tomorrow. Um, it, you know, Just adjust this how you need it to be. But those are the main things you want to consider. Okay, so that is the personal setup. Now, like I was saying, let's say you have a couple of accounts. You'll notice something in the URL bar up here right away. Um, you see this mail.google.com slash mail slash you slash two. Okay, if you are in your like personal Gmail account or the first Gmail account you have open or you've uh, signed into in a browser, it's gonna say zero. Okay, and then it goes from there. Maybe you've signed into your personal account then you signed into another Gmail account for a business or a G Suite account, that's gonna have a one. The second one is gonna have a two, the third would have a three, and that's how it differentiates between these other uh, accounts because otherwise they would all be the same and then it would be very confusing. And when you go in here, you can see that it's got that two up there. However, something funky happens when uh, you're using this and you're forwarding stuff along. For whatever reason, uh, the URL uh, gra uh, changes or there's something that happens and I had to figure this out kind of the hard way but basically you've got to change it from a zero to a two even though you see up here it says a two so what I mean by that is now this is the difference between having a um, having your I'll say your your first signed in account and by that I mean I could make to m make this extra confusing I could have this account, this Productivity Academy account, be a zero. It's about what order you signed into accounts, not necessarily that it's personal or a business account or anything like that. So the first Gmail account you sign into on a browser, that's gonna have a zero. The second one you sign into is gonna be a one, two, three, so on. Okay, so let's say you have a one, a two, a three, you know, fourth account, whatever it is, you then need to add in a formatter, um, which is the, the really the only change. And then you need to, you know, whatever that number is, you need to find it and replace it. Okay, so it starts off the exact same. You know, you just select the different account. In this case, it's my Productivity Academy account. So a new start email. And then what I need to do is I need to do a transform, okay, let me go back here, it's a formatter by Zapier, and it's an action event on text, all right, and we are going to replace, that's the transform, is we want to replace, and the input is the message URL, okay, and we're looking for u, or slash u, slash zero, and we want to replace it with slash u, slash whatever that number is of that account that you're setting up. In this case, it's a two, and then we go and we create the task, and you can see that this is going to basically be the same. However, we're now, anytime we have that URL that we want, like in the task description, we are using it um, in as, sorry, we are grabbing that link from the output here instead of from the Gmail side of things. So that's the difference. If I switch back over to here and scroll back up, you'll see that we are just using the email URL that we got. Yes, it's coming from the spreadsheet, but we got that directly from the Gmail step. And something else I did with my other accounts I didn't do with the personal account was I added the link into the subject, which I, you know, you can take it or leave it. That way it's very easily um, available, but I've found it to be enough. I just never changed it. So I wanted to kind of go into the nuts and bolts of this because this can be confusing the first time you set it up. Uh, but it can be so helpful if you have, especially if you have multiple accounts that you're in and out of, um, and even if you just have one account you're running things through, it can be really helpful to keep yourself out of your inbox. So let's take a look. I'll hop over. 
Um, like I said, we started this uh, at the beginning of the video, so let's go over here and check this out. I am going to refresh. There we go. All right, that might have been down there before, I just didn't notice it. Um, but we see down here and we will click on this and see I've got things kind of blown up to make it easy, easily visible. Email to action. Okay, we've got the name, we've got uh, who it's coming from, we've got the subject line, and we've got the link. And right away, that's clickable. I can open that up. We have the correct inbox. And the great part about this is if I click on this, it doesn't go to my inbox. It doesn't go somewhere random. It goes directly to that email. So I'm already in there. Don't have to go searching for it. Super handy. And then down here, of course, you can see we've still got the link, we've got the from, the subject, uh, we've got additional info, but basically we've got the uh, content. So I can scroll through here if I needed to read it or needed something else from it, whatever it is, need to turn it into a task. It's all ready to go. So hopefully this is helpful. I know it can be confusing, but again, setting it up is super helpful and it's worth the time. Even if it took you 30 minutes the first time to set this up, this is going to save you a ton of time. Uh, you know, a ton of uh, going down rabbit holes and keeping you out of your inbox. So give it a shot. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, issues, uh, leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Thanks.